Welcome to the Managing the Smart Mind podcast with your host, Coach Kramer. This is episode 43, a mini course in emotional agility, part four, solidified stories. Oh, smart human. Welcome back to part four of this free mini course on emotional agility. Again, I'll start with a quick recap. And if this is the first you know, part of the mini course you're listening to, go back to part one, please. It will make much more sense to listen to these in the right order. So in part one, we looked at the neuroscience of emotions, how they're created, how they shape your experience your past and your future. In the second part, we focused on what you can do to create a kind of healthy baseline for emotional well-being and also what you can do in the actual moment an emotion arises in your body, how to deal with that. In the last part, part three, we looked at how your thoughts influence your emotions and how you can change your emotions by changing your thoughts. And in this fourth part, we're actually going to dig a bit deeper into that, into the art of influencing your emotions by changing your thoughts and thought patterns. Now, remember, your thoughts are always coloring your emotions, whether they're conscious or not. Right? You have heaps of thoughts that are constantly coloring your experience. And for more info on how this spills out in your entire life, you may want to check out the episode on confirmation bias if you haven't yet. Some of these thoughts have been imprinted on your brain so many times that they have become what I call solidified stories. They seem so obvious and so true to you that you won't even consider questioning them. And you have solidified stories about the world, about money, about other people, about yourself, about how you should be treated, all the things. And these solidified stories are a massive contributor to your emotions. Because remember, those thoughts and beliefs in the database in your brain also co-create your emotions in the moment. So in this fourth part, we're going to look at how you can first identify the solidified stories, then unravel them and then replace them. If and when you want to, because you don't need to replace solidified stories that actually serve you. So how do you decide? Well, you may actually have solidified stories that serve you really well. Like, I am very smart could be a story that is solidified and that you want to hang on to. I have a personal solidified story that I definitely want to keep and it is that I will always be able to make money no matter what. I've been working, making money since I started babysitting at age nine and I have had so many different jobs by now. I'm not even going to try and list them here. Be fun for maybe a bonus episode someday. All my jobs and what I learned from them. Uh, But all of this has contributed to a very solid, a very strong belief that I can always make money when I need to. And this is not a story that I'm going to change. It's actually really helpful to have, especially as an entrepreneur. So if you start doing this work, you want to focus on the solidified stories that actually block you, that sabotage you, that make you miserable. And of course, I had one of those too for a very long time. I had very many, (laughs) but here's one example. I was, and I still am, a bookworm. I love to read. I love to just sit in a library with a pile of books. That's my happy place. I grew up hating sports. Add purity to that and an eating disorder, being overweight, that all made me hate sports and working out even more. Add to that a sister who became a professional athlete and professional as in actually going to the Olympics. Well, you probably get the picture. I had a solidified story that sports were stupid, a complete waste of time and not for people like me. And it wasn't until I discovered Aikido when I was in my mid-twenties that I realized I actually love to work out. (laughs) That was really, that blew my mind. I love to move my body. And what's more, I actually need it 
to regulate, right? I now understand that now that I know I'm autistic and ADHD, like for me, moving is essential. It's so essential to my well-being, probably even more so than to the average human, like neurotypical human. So as my brain and my body fell in love with Aikido, my beliefs about sports started to shift. Slowly but surely, I started to have thoughts like, working out is fun. I can't wait to go to the dojo. And I have the perfect body for this, right? I'm very strong and I have lots of staying power. And I could just go on for hours and hours and just loved smashing people against a tatami and also being smashed against a tatami myself. <laughs> so my solidified story about sport was slowly dissolved and replaced by the story that I actually love to train and that I have the perfect body for the sports I like. So much more fun. And listen, you can do the same with your solidified stories. Any story about something that happened to you in the past, for example. A story about your in-laws. A story about your capacity to make money. You do not need to keep sus subscribing to these stories and strengthening the neural pathways that support them. You can actually break free from them and rewrite them into stories that serve you much better. But wait, you're probably thinking, isn't that just lying to yourself? I mean, are you just supposed to believe something more fun without any evidence, without anything actually changing in the actual real world? Well, yes, and no. Remember, your current story is already a kind of delusion. So if you're going to be lying to yourself anyway, if you're going to be delusional anyway, why not do it in a way that builds you up rather than breaks you down? And again, no, we're not arguing with the laws of gravity here, right? Don't, I'm not saying believe you can fly and jump out of a window. We are arguing with things that are very much open to interpretation, that aren't fixed or black and white. And then making intentional choices about what to believe in those situations. Here are some examples of those types of stories. He's such a jerk. I suck at making money. I'll never have a job I like. I'm surrounded by idiots. There's never enough time. Fun list, right? <laughs> so fun. Now, you may believe that your ex is a complete jerk and your girlfriends may believe that too. Or your boyfriends or any friends. But does the whole world agree on that? Does his mom agree? <laughs> Probably not. It's just a solidified story. Maybe you like the story. Then you get to keep it. But if you don't, you may want to stop feeding into it. Stop seeing everything your ex does as a proof that he's an absolute dick. And maybe even this thought that you should have different thoughts about your ex make you furious. If it does, then you definitely want to rewrite your story about them. And this is where I want to mention something very important. Changing the way we think about other people does not absolve them from misdeeds, right? If they've done something harmful, we can change our story about what that means, but we are not going to make them, you know, angels. That's not the idea. We don't do it for them. This is also not about forgiveness. That's a whole different chapter. We do it for us, because they are living rent-free in our head and taking up precious space and energy. So it's time that they leave. Think about it. Who do you have in your current life or in your past that is taking up headspace? Got it? Okay. Are you enjoying that? If not, then it's time to get them out. And one of the best ways to do this, to re rewrite your story about them, is using Byron Katie's Judge Your Neighbor worksheet. I've talked about this before, and I'll, again, I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Basically, you want to write down all the thoughts you have about this person and start challenging them. Start challenging the thought, not the person. Are they true? Are the thoughts true? Are they really true? When you think those thoughts, when you believe them, how do you feel? How do you treat yourself when you think your ex is a jerk? How do you treat others? How do you treat 
the person involved. Is that what you want? And if not, can you see how this is not the absolute truth of who they are? Can you let go of your solidified story? Now, as you may guess, this can be very intense work. And if you find it challenging or triggering, you want to seek out a coach or therapist to help you. But it is one of the best ways to manage your emotions and through that your energy, right? You will feel so much more energized and clear after weeding out the stories that no longer serve you. Okay, so that's stories about other people. Now, what about you? What do you believe about you, you, yourself, that isn't particularly helpful? I want you to make a list. And here are some stories about me that were on my list before I discovered that these stories are actually optional. This is what I used to think. I'll never amount to anything. I'm so lazy and undisciplined. Nobody genuinely likes me. I never feel I belong. I can't stick to anything and see it through to the end. I'm incredibly impatient. I'm bad with money and I'm a bad mum. It's definitely not fun to walk around with all these stories in your head, as I'm sure you can imagine, right? So I want you to carve out some time and sit down, actually do this exercise. Pick one area of your life or one person to not make it too overwhelming, right? Seriously, keep it small and contained. It could be a story about a specific person and what they've done. It could be about your character or your body. It could be about you. Or it could be your stories about money or the world or whatever you're holding that is sabotaging you. So pick one thing to focus on and then write down all the thoughts that make up your solidified story about this. Right? Just put them all on paper. A bit like sort of you know, writing diarrhea. Just let it all come out. And usually when you start doing this, you will already feel a shift you'll look at the thoughts on the page and see how ridiculous or over-the-top drama queen some of them are. And the good news is, those you don't even need to work with. They're, you know, instantly dissolved. And you're just like, well, okay, that's a bit ridiculous, right? That's a bit OTT. Next step is to pick the one that triggers you most and then use the above questions can download the transcript to find them again, or you can download Byron Katie's worksheet, right? And then start questioning that one thought that triggers you most. And you will find if you do this, if you take the time to really do this, the most amazing freedom on the other side of that story. Because yes, you can change the way you feel about almost anything. Find the thoughts, question them, and see how they fall away. Now, when they're gone, you may just want to sit in that empty space for a while. The space of no story. It's actually quite beautiful there. But because we humans human, because of the way our human brains work, we do have a tendency to shift out of no story back to story pretty quickly. So after the story has fallen away and you've sat in that for a while, you want to replace it with one that serves you better. And this is where you get to be creative. Feel into it. What is a story that you can subscribe to and that doesn't make you feel like crap? About your ex, maybe that they're trying their best within their capabilities. Maybe you also want to drop the sarcasm about their capabilities, but I'll leave that up to you. If it's about money, maybe if you come from, I'm crap at making money, then I am stellar at making money is a bit of a stretch. So you can use, I'm getting better at making money instead. It's a bit like Play-Doh. You use the words like clay and you try things out and then you check in with yourself to see how they feel. Now, maybe you're listening to this and you have absolutely no idea whether you have these solidified stories and if so, what they could be. Maybe that isn't accessible to you. 
well, no worries. You can actually use your emotions as solidified story detectors. And here are some examples. Feel furious every time you see that specific colleague. There is probably a story there. Do you get sick to your stomach when thinking about reaching out to people on LinkedIn? Find the story. (laughs) Seriously. This is actually a lot of the work we coaches do. We are solidified story finders. I have a very strong solidified story detector. You may think that coaches are supposed to motivate people, help them excel, etc., etc. Sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. But I mean, that shit is easy, right? Most smart humans I know are already very capable and very motivated. Capability or motivation isn't the problem. And they're very smart, right? So they would have done it if they could. It's all the invisible ways in which they sabotage themselves. It's all the solidified stories. So give this a try. Find at least one story this week and see if you can clear it up. And if you want to get serious about weeding out those solidified stories and blowing your own mind with what is possible for you, get in touch. Go to coachkramer.org slash work with me. I have no idea. (laughs) what the actual URL is, but you can find it, I'm sure, to learn how I can help you rewrite your stories and rewrite your life. Have a beautiful week. Bye-bye.